Sustainable Development Goal 2, also known as SDG 2, aims to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. Its eight targets require countries to address social, environmental and economic processes to make progress towards the achievement of the goal over the next 15 years. How can these efforts be evaluated before the implementation of SDGs starts? Are the goals, targets and indicators measurable and achievable? To answer such questions, the evaluation officers of the Rome-based agencies, FAO, IFAD, WFP and CGIAR, convened an international technical seminar on the evaluability of SDG2, which took place at IFAD headquarters in Rome on the 17th and 18th of November 2015. The main objective of the seminar, of the technical seminar, is to identify how to evaluate the results of SDG 2. What I mean by results is how it, this will impact the life of people in terms of their well-being, but beyond that, uh, how the different targets uh, expressed in SDG 2 will be articulated. And for that, we will identify what is the available data for following up the indicators, what are the relationships between the national monitoring and evaluation systems and the global efforts to end hunger, and finally, what are the political economy of evidence, who gains, who loses, in conducting this type of exercises. Over 160 participants attended, coming from more than 35 countries, and representing diverse technical and organizational backgrounds, including national governments, academia, think tanks, private sector and UN organizations. They were welcomed by the high-level representatives of the four agencies. Their statements focused on the complexity of the SDG challenge and the interrelationship between the SDGs, the role of evaluation, the credible evidence of progress, and the value of partnerships and coordination among Rome-based agencies and other stakeholders. This seminar is, is really just the start of, 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 a, of a much needed inclusive dialogue about SDG2. The changes the new framework brings for the way we all work in development and humanitarian arenas and the implications for how to measure progress. When I speak with my nutrition colleagues, they're not particularly interested in increasing food production. They talk about food waste. They talk about the importance of breastfeeding. They talk about a whole series of things and not necessarily about increasing food production at all. They prefer to talk about diet guidelines, for instance. I'm just trying to say, if we really want to have evaluability of SDG2, we have to have a narrative where ending hunger and nutrition and even sustainable agriculture fit in. We often measure development, unfortunately, and this is global, by how much money we have disbursed. I think instead we should be considering how many people are coming out of poverty and have better lives as a result of development assistance. All of these topics for us at FAO are, uh, are really familiar in seeing how we contribute to change or influence change or leverage change at the country level, inevitably working with partners, inevitably in complex situations. Uh, hopefully adding value to the work of lots of others rather than thinking that it is kind of a linear uh, process. The two keynote speakers, Jomo Kwame Sundaram and Sunita Narain, focused on the role of nutrition. They highlighted the need to ensure and protect diversity in food systems and the role of data revolution and its tremendous potential to assist in monitoring the SDGs. What measures we are going to use? And Although similar but distinct, I would emphasize the questions of the methodologies. The SDGs are really about a different theory of change. The other big issue that is emerging across our region is the increasing vulnerability because of climate change. So you need to make, we need to make the link. There is a separate SDG for climate change, but we need to make sure in an interconnected world we bring the issues together. The discussions took place in four roundtables and explored interconnected themes. 
They reviewed the availability of evidence and the conditions and limitations for conducting future evaluations. This afternoon we had a very productive discussion about approaches to collecting data, approaches to analyzing data and what are the issues around evaluating various actions in uh, realizing SDG2 objectives on sustainable agriculture and nutrition outcomes. The roundtable chairs and the participating experts shared the outcomes of the roundtable discussions. The sessions highlighted the opportunities, but also the challenges that would be faced for evaluation under the SDGs. There was a general agreement that this event should mark the beginning of a dialogue about evaluation and SDG 2. The first group focused primarily on indicators for hunger, food security and nutrition, which are important non-monetary indicators of well-being at the household and community levels. We also talked about where we perceive there to be gaps in terms of metrics. Pretty much everyone agreed that it would be immensely valuable if, in fact, uh, we had better me metrics in terms of me measures of diet quality. SDGs are supposed to be universal. It's suggesting that, in some sense, we're missing out on a big part of the picture of food security. The second group offered perspectives on the importance of partnerships for achieving SDG 2 accountability issues in working with partnerships and learning from the multi-stakeholder evaluation of the implementation of the Paris Declaration. If we say that there is no single theory of change for SDG 2, that, that doesn't mean evaluators can't do theory-based evaluation. It means you have to find the theory of change behind the specific, for the specific evaluation that you are doing. There are going to be lots and lots of different theories of change. The discussions in Group 3 covered two major areas the extent to which SDG 2 is aligned with national priorities and the readiness of national systems to track progress on SDG 2. We have ability to collect data of varying quality in countries. That does not necessarily lead us to evaluation, to overemphasize that area as one of the vehicles that will strengthen evaluation would be a mistake, and I am sure we all are aware of it, but probably we should make it explicit. The fourth working group sought answers to four questions. What is evaluation's value proposition for a sustainable future? Who assesses that value proposition? Who has legitimacy, rights, and a voice in bringing their interests to bear on what evaluation addresses and how it is conducted? And who are the users of evaluation? The users of evaluations are not the people who can actually affect the change. I think we need to take evaluation to the street. I think we need to take evaluation to communities. I think we, we, we really have to begin to think about going beyond evaluation as a set of techniques re reserved for experts, but really as a public good. In wrapping up, the heads of the evaluation officers underlined how the seminar represented the first step on the road to stronger and equal partnerships to strengthen evaluability and the broader use of evidence. Given their institutional mandates, the Rome-based agencies are called to be at the forefront of evaluation of SDG 2. When we talk about SDGs, uh, we normally start the conversation with uh, goals, indicators and so on, and we discuss that a lot. But it's broader than that, we have to know how we are going to achieve these SDGs and what works, what doesn't work. The SDGs themselves will not be evaluated by any particular UN agency. There will be a, a multiplicity of actors, a multiplicity of evaluative efforts around the SDGs. We have um, really highlighted in that seminar how complex uh, the endeavor of evaluating the SDG2 is. And I think um, in that uh, roles and responsibility, we should uh, also reflect with uh, scientists, with uh, experts, uh, also with politicians, on how we can best support uh, their endeavor. The seminar has been a highlight in the series of events that mark the International Year of Evaluation in 2015. At the end of the workshop, the head of the UN Evaluation Group, Marco Segone,
pass the evaluation torch to the agency heads, symbolically shedding light on development by enhancing and strengthening the evaluation practice. Evaluation must become an agent of change for the SDGs. In doing so, it must consider how to move beyond conducting evaluations towards instilling and developing evaluative thinking in politicians, with an increasing focus on building the capacity to evaluate and on persuading decision-makers of the value of evaluation.